It's time to make it Just give it a try Cause you can make it Like the old fat guy Welcome to You Can Make It. I'm David Farrell, the old fat guy. Today I'm going to make a classic dessert that goes back a couple of centuries called cottage pudding. Now the surprising thing about cottage pudding is it has no pudding in it. It's actually a moist cake that has a brandy sauce put on top of it. The reason it's called a pudding is back when this was first created, all desserts were called puddings. So let's see how to make cottage pudding. It's really quite simple. We're going to start off with 450 milliliters or about 212 grams of all-purpose flour. If you're measuring this, sift it before you measure it and leave it off. Don't just scoop it out or you'll get too much. And here I have 15 milliliters or a tablespoon of baking powder and 2 milliliters or about half a teaspoon of salt. And you just want to add that to the flour and stir it up. And as with most basic cakes, we're now going to go to creaming our butter. So we're just going to get my stand mixer out and we're going to add 65 milliliters or a quarter of a cup plus one tablespoon of butter. And I've got the beater attachment on my stand mixer and we'll just give it a beat. Now, you can see excuse me there, that when you beat it for a few seconds, it starts to get kind of white. That's what lets you know that it's ready. And we're just going to scrape that down a bit into the bowl. And we're going to add our sugar. We're going to be adding 200 milliliters of sugar, which is 3 quarters of a cup. And we're going to cream that into the butter. And once again, we're just going to give it a good beat. And you can see that the Sugar and butter are nicely mixed together now and look quite light. And the next thing we're going to add is an egg. This is pretty well the same procedure that's used for all basic cakes. You cream your butter and sugar and then you add an egg. And this is also the time you add the flavoring. This is when you can put some vanilla in. So I'm going to be adding five milliliters or a teaspoonful of vanilla. And once again, you want to give it a good mix. Tire it off a little slower this time because there's some liquid in it that can splash out. And then you want to let it go for a good minute just to really make sure you got the egg incorporated in. Okay, you can see that it's nice and well mixed. It's always a good idea every once in a while though to scrape your bowl and make sure you don't have any unincorporated bits coming in. Scrape the batter off of the beater here. Okay, so now we got to add our dry ingredients that we mixed up earlier and some milk. That will finish off our pudding. So you could just dump it in and mix it up, but it tends to get lumpy then. So what you want to do is you want to add about a third of the dry mixture and give it a slow mix. You 
You've got to be really careful not to overmix or you'll get a tough cake. You'll bring the gluten out of the flour just like you would in bread. Now we're going to add half of the milk. Now what I have here is 250 milliliters or one cup of milk. So we're going to add about half of that. There we go. Don't worry about being exact. And once again, go slow because you got some liquids in there. Okay, now we're going to add another third of the dry ingredients. A little slow start. Now before you give it the last addition, I really strongly recommend that you give it one more scrape down to get all the flour off the edge. And no bits on the bottom. There we go. So it's time to add the last third of the flour. And the last half of the milk. And let it beat for about 30 seconds to a minute. What you're looking for is to be smooth with no lumps in it. And as you can see, nice smooth batter, no lumps. That's exactly what you're looking for. So we'll just take this now and put it in a nine inch square cake pan. So just let me get my pan out. So, we'll put the batter in. Now, I've sprayed this pan with some baking spray. That's important so the cake comes out easily. And we're just going to pour the batter into the cake pan. There we go. We have the batter in. And we just want to give the pan now a little shake to get the batter all over the bottom of the pan. Now, I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to go in for 30 minutes. Now we're going to make the sauce that goes on top of the cottage pudding. We're going to be making a sauce based on a flour thickening agent which requires us to melt two tablespoons of butter that we have to put in our saucepan here. And then we'll be adding two tablespoons or 15 milliliters of flour to act as the thickening agent. That has to be done on the stove. The butter's pretty well melted now. I've got it on medium-low heat. And when it's melted, you want to add the flour. Flour and butter is called a roux. It's a classic thickening agent. And a lot of the old-time sauces were based on a roux thickener. So you just want to mix them together until all the lumps are gone and the flour is totally incorporated into the melted butter. There we go. Now you're going to add to the roux some brown sugar. I got 125 milliliters or half a cup of brown sugar. And I've got one milliliter or a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. You need the salt just to kick the flavor up a bit. And you want to mix them in until they're well combined with the roux. There we go. You can see that it's all getting to be a uniform color now. That's what you're looking for. And I have 
200 milliliters or three quarters of a cup of boiling water. I'll be adding to this now. And you want to stir over medium low heat until the sugar is totally dissolved. Now that the sugar is totally dissolved, you're going to want to let it cook for another at least two minutes up to about three minutes just for this sauce to get a little thickened. You can see it's just starting to bubble and that's usually when the sauce gets a nice syrupy consistency to it. And then you can turn your heat off and take the pan off of the heat. And what we, the reason we take it off the heat is we're going to be adding two tablespoons or 25 milliliters of brandy. And if you leave the brandy on the heat, you cook the flavor out. And we're also going to add five milliliters or a teaspoon of vanilla, just to give it a bit richer flavor. And you just stir those in, and our sauce is ready for when the cake is finished. The cottage pudding cake part has come out of the oven. It's just cooled down a little bit for a couple of minutes. Let's cut a piece and put it in our bowl. Go, a nice little piece of cottage pudding. And the big treat that all the kids liked in the old days, of course, is the sauce we're going to put over the top of the cottage pudding. Just let it go over the pudding like that. And of course, the best part of any cooking recipe is trying the results. So we'll just take a mouthful. Make sure you get some sauce. Mmm. The cake is a really moist cake. It almost makes you think of a pudding. The sauce is sweet but has that brandy hit that makes it feel kind of elegant. This is a great dessert and you can make it. In this recipe, David made cottage pudding. The ingredients used were 450 milliliters of flour, 15 milliliters of baking powder, 2 milliliters of salt, 65 milliliters of butter, 200 milliliters of sugar, one egg, five milliliters of vanilla, and 250 milliliters of milk. The sauce consisted of 25 milliliters of butter, 25 milliliters of flour, 125 milliliters of packed brown sugar, one milliliter of salt, 200 milliliters of boiling water, 25 milliliters of brandy, and five milliliters of vanilla. For the complete recipe, visit David's blog at oldfatguy.ca It's time to make it Just give it a try Cause you can make it Like the old fat guy Welcome to You Can Make It, I'm David Farrell, the old fat guy. Today I'm going to make a pizza shell. And the best part of this pizza shell is it's actually designed to freeze. So you can make one, put it in your freezer, and then bring it out sometime when you want a meal in a hurry. So let's get into making a pizza shell. You will not believe how easy it is. I'm going to start off by putting some dry ingredients into the bowl of my stand mixer. I'm going to be using 250 milliliters or one cup of uh, white flour. Now remember you gotta kinda sift it before you measure it or you'll end up with too much. And that actually works out to 130 grams. If you'd rather weigh it, 130 grams is the same amount. So I'm just gonna put the one cup of white flour in and I'm also gonna use 250 milliliters or one cup of whole wheat flour. If you like a totally white crust, you can just use two cups of white flour, but I like some whole wheat in my pizza dough. Then I'm going to be adding some more dry ingredients. I have here 12 milliliters of, or two and a half teaspoons of 
instant rise yeast. I have eight milliliters of sugar, or uh, one and a half teaspoons. I have four milliliters, or three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And an optional thing you can put in or not as you like is I have five milliliters of mixed Italian seasonings. It just gives a bit more flavor, but it's not necessary. So we're just going to add those dry ingredients to the flour in the mixer bowl. And we're going to mix them up so that they're well distributed amongst the flour. Now, the way that the uh, instant rise yeast works is it needs some warmth. So we're going to be taking two-thirds of a cup or 175 milliliters of water that has added to it 40 milliliters or three tablespoons of oil. I'm just going to take this to my microwave and heat it up to between 120 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. That takes about a minute in a microwave on high. Now that the water and oil is heated to the appropriate temperature, you just need to pour it into the center of the flour in the mixing bowl. And you'll note I don't have the paddle on my stand mixer. I have a dough hook. That's because we're going to knead that liquid into the flour. So just start it on slow. And it's going to take just a few seconds for the flour to start to cling to the dough hook. Now that it's just starting to form a ball that actually clings to the bottom of the dough hook, I'm going to increase the speed to my regular kneading speed, and I'm going to let this knead for seven minutes. The dough's just finished kneading for seven minutes, so we're just going to turn it off. You'll note when I take this out onto the work surface that it's going to be a little bit moister than your average bread dough. That's because this is designed to freeze, and when you freeze things, they lose a lot of moisture. So we'll just flour my work surface here and we're just going to take the uh, bread dough out of the pan. There you are. And you can see it's kind of soft and raggedy compared to the average dough that you make. So we're just going to put it onto the floured surface. we go. Now, you'll want to just knead it three or four times just because it'll be easier to work with if you have a layer of flour on top of that soft dough. So there we go, a nice round bowl of dough that's easy to deal with. It's got to rise for only 10 minutes because it is instant rise yeast, so we'll just cover it with a towel and we're going to let it sit for 10 minutes. Our dough's been rising for 10 minutes and We'll just take the towel off of it. You keep the towel on it to keep the surface moist so it doesn't dry out and stop it from rising. And now we have to put it into the shape of a pizza crust. So we're just going to start pressing it out into a flat disc. And try to press from the inside out. And you notice I've got a good floured surface here, but I let it get a little unfloured. So we'll just spread some more flour around on there. And get it into a good disc. And then we start work thinning the edges out. And if you uh, want to show off to your friends, you can practice and do a little bit of this. But that takes some practice. Much easier is to just take a rolling pin and dust your rolling pin with a little flour and roll it out until it's about 12 inches. We're going to be putting on a 12 inch pizza pan. Don't worry if it's a little larger. There we go. That's a little bit bigger than the pizza pan. So now just fold it in half and bring your pizza pan over and put your dough on it and unfold it. Now you'll see it always tends to shrink back a bit. That's no problem at all. Just press it into the corners and you want to pinch it up around the edge a little bit because you want a rim which helps hold the toppings in. And there you have a completed pizza shell. At this point, 
you can take this and put it in the freezer for two hours. Then take the dough off of it, wrap it in plastic wrap, and leave it in the freezer until you're ready to use it in some future date. Just take it out of the freezer for 30 minutes before you start topping it to thaw out, and you're ready to go. Today, I'm going to go right to making a pizza. So, no freezing today. You can use it right away or freeze it. You can also double or triple the recipe if you want to do two or three pizza shells. It's totally up to you. So, I'm just going to start with some pizza sauce. Now, I make my own. You can use jarred marinara sauce or jarred pizza sauce. I like to use about three quarters of a cup. Just use the back of a spoon to spread it around. So 200 milliliters or 300 or three quarters of a cup of pizza sauce gives you a nice coating without making it too soggy. You can see I like my homemade one a little chunky, that's up to you too. So now that we got the pizza sauce on it, you can put any toppings you like on your pizza. That's one of the best things for a family is the kids get to pick what they like. I like Coppa de Parma. It's a Italian cured pork butt, and it's not spicy like Coppa Cola, which has got a bit of pepper, but you can use pepperoni, peppers, mushrooms, whatever you like on your pizza. So I'm just going to put some of this Coppa all over my pizza. There we go. Now, of course, pizza traditionally has cheese on it. So I have here some, about one and a half cups of shredded mozzarella. You can use this or you can use the pizza mix that's pre-grated in the supermarket that you see. Just whatever's good for you. And just sprinkle it evenly over the surface of the pizza. If you like more cheese, use more cheese. If you like less cheese, use less cheese. You make your pizza the way you like it. So now that I've got the cheese on the pizza, I'm just going to put this in the oven. I have the oven preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, and it will take between 20 to 23 minutes for the pizza to cook. The pizza cooked for 20 minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit, and you can tell it's done when you look around the edges and you see it's all nice and golden brown like that. That means it's ready. So let's slice it up and see how it looks. And there's what I call something ready for your family. So let's just take a slice and you can look and see that it's nice and crispy. And let's give it a taste now. That's what I like to do. Mmm. Mm. It has a great color even on the bottom. It's got a wonderful chew to it. It's not tough at all. It's a really good pizza shell, and the best part is, you can make it. In this recipe, David made a whole wheat pizza shell. The ingredients used were 250 milliliters of flour, 250 milliliters of whole wheat flour, 12 milliliters of quick rise yeast, 8 milliliters of sugar, 4 milliliters of salt, 175 milliliters of warm water, 40 milliliters of oil, and five milliliters of Italian seasonings. For the complete recipe, visit David's blog at oldfatguy.ca.